Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for uh, joining. I just wanted to inform you a little bit about because there, we see a couple of questions about the muting. So this is Zoom webinar, not a Zoom meeting. And the reason we're using this one is because it automatically keeps participants on mute. And that's because about 90 people uh, registered their interest for this webinar. So we thought that this would probably be the best uh, way to manage. And uh, we are just waiting for a couple of our panelists to join. And then we're going to start in a couple of minutes. Thanks so much for your patience. And thanks for all of you who are on time. <laughs>
Good morning, everyone. Welcome and thank you for your patience for waiting. And also thank you for your interest in joining this webinar. Um, we'll just uh, ask for a little bit more patience on your side as we're doing this for the first time. And afterwards, I hope uh, in the feedback, you can tell us how we can improve. Um, I just want to note that if you can turn on the caption option, you'll be able to see the live transcription. We have someone, Denise, who's doing the captions for us. So uh, just a note to our panelists that uh, if you're speaking, try to be clear and uh, take lots of pauses to let Denise do her work and uh, deep breaths as well. So first of all, I'm just introducing this webinar um, on women with disabilities and the Beijing Platform for Action. And uh, this is being hosted uh, jointly by my organization and I'm joining from our office in Thailand. We're the Asia Pacific Forum on Women, Law and Development. Uh, we are a regional feminist organization with members in 27 countries in Asia and Pacific. Uh, we are a, a, a believers in the strength of autonomous feminist movements, but we also strongly believe in cross-movement solidarity. And uh, the Asia Pacific Women with Disabilities United, a regional network for women with disabilities, is convened by us, and our members actually are on both sides of that. So a couple of the panelists uh, this morning uh, are actually both with APWWDU as well as APWLD. I'm now just going to introduce who else is uh, on, on this webinar assisting as well as speaking. Uh, so first of all, myself, I'm Sanam. Uh, I'm a program officer for the Asia Pacific Forum on Women, Law and Development. I'm joined by my colleagues, um, Marion, do you want to just call across? <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Marion. I'm Filipino, but I've been based here in Chiang Mai with the Asia Pacific Forum on Women Law and Development for about seven years now. I handle the feminist law and practice program. And Patricia? Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you for coming uh, to this webinar. I am Patricia. I'm from Indonesia. I'm the program <coughs> associate for uh, Room and Network Support in APWLD. And finally, my colleague Ya sitting next to me here. Hi, everyone. This is Ya. I'm originally from China and I'm working with APWLD Secretariat. And uh, now we'd like to just jump uh, to introductions from our panelists. Uh, Susan, could we ask you to introduce yourself? Susan is from Mobility International USA. Oh, should I unmute her? Live in disability while, and I am so honored and thrilled to be here. Because we missed the first part, sorry. Okay, um, this is Susan. I'm, I'm with Mobility International USA, and we are known for our international women's leadership program called WILD, the Women's Institute on Leadership and Disability. I'm a wheelchair rider, and uh, we are based in Oregon in the United States, and I'm honored and very excited to learn from all the fabulous women on this call, so thank you. Thank you, Susan. And uh, now I'd like to introduce, uh, let's like ask Abia to introduce herself. She's dialing in from Pakistan. Hi, the 
Abia, <laughs> could you, I, I think you're joining on two devices. Can you just use one because there's a lot of echo? All right, um, just to say that Abia is uh, joining us from Pakistan and uh, we'll come back to you in a second. Niju, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, actually, uh, and usually my global friend called me Niju. Uh, I'm a new member of the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disability from the uh, Republic of Korea. And um, I had worked uh, several years with uh, APWLD for women with disability uh, movement in Asia Pacific area. Uh, it is very honor and happy to be here and join you this wonderful event. Thank you. Thank you, Meiju. So um, I would like to explain a little bit of the subject of this uh, webinar and why we're doing this. And then I'm going to hand over to Susan to talk a little bit in more detail. So the Beijing Platform for Action, and apologies if you already know this, is, uh, uh, is the outcome, uh, is the platform that is the outcome also of the 1995 Fourth World Conference on women, which took place in Beijing. It is considered the blueprint on women's rights. Uh, it's, it's a very progressive document, and uh, one of the steps forward that came out of uh, that Fourth World Conference, and there hasn't been another one uh, since, is that the commitments on this platform are reviewed every five years. Now, um, we're here in 2019. Next year, it's going to be the 25-year uh, review of the platform. And that's why we're doing this. We want to make sure that there's a lot of interlinkage uh, with different movements and with the feminist movement as we go forward into this review process. And we'll share some more details on that. But first, I would like to invite Susan to speak a little bit more of the experiences in 1995, particularly the first international symposium that took place and I think really shows how strong we can be when the disabilities movement and the women's movement come together. So Susan, I'm just unmuting you in one second. Over to you, Susan. Okay, well, thank you so much. So this is Susan Siegel from IUSA. And it's really very emotional to speak about the Beijing conference which happened 25 years ago. And myself and Cindy Lewis, who's also on this call, we helped organize the first international symposium on women with disabilities that really brought together over 200 disabled women, as you saw on your slide, from 25 countries. And that was really important. We really wanted to, what we call now, infiltrate the Women's Beijing Conference, because at that time, really the women's movement wasn't really including issues of disabled women and disabled women leaders were not being included, we thought, as they should be. So we organized, we had our own symposium on that day. It was a very emotional day. And then, um, during the symposium, a group of disab disabled women protested because the venue was not accessible. Their workshop was on the third floor with no elevators. And from that, there, I believe CNN covered the story. It was really perhaps maybe the first time that disabled women internationally were really seen as a vital force at the conference protesting and really demanding that we be included. And the accessibility on that conference was terrible. There was no access. There was not enough sign language interpreters. 
there was not information in Braille and alternate formats. So we say a lot, it was the worst of times, but it was also the best of times. The worst of times because of the inaccessibility and the non-recognition of who we were, but it was also the best of time because at that conference, I think women with disabilities started talking with each other and we were saying that we really want to have a place to share information, to share strategies, so that disabled women can take the lead and make sure that international development issues were included, and also that women with disabilities were seen as the leaders of this movement. So from that Beijing conference, the program that Mobility International USA does, we're about to host it in a few days, the WILD program, the Women's Institute on Leadership and Disability, was really born from that conference. And I believe my great, wonderful sister and leader, Miju, was at one of our first WILD programs, as well as literally hundreds and hundreds now of disabled women leaders have participated from all over the world. So with that, I would like to end, and um, I know there are other speakers, but I'm really excited to learn from all the women on this call to really bring life back to that Beijing platform of action and really see how can we use that tool to really create meaningful change for women with all types of disabilities from all over the world to really take our role as leaders, which is what we um, need to be doing to, to create the world where disabled women have, have the human rights and justice that we deserve. So with that, I will turn it back to the uh, wonderful facilitators and also um, really want to acknowledge the many women leaders on this call and I'm looking forward to hearing from all of you. So thank you. Thanks so much, um, Susan, for that little glimpse into the beginnings. I think I just want to observe here that unfortunately a lot of the issues that you've outlined like just basically having accessible meeting rooms is still a struggle for us at the moment. I mean just recently uh, we had to deal with having to explain that uh, not having an accessible bathroom at, at the same floor of the meeting room is a problem. So. These, these are the kind of challenges that I'm sad to say 25 years on we're still talking about. So um, to move on a little bit to how the reviews have been taking place at the regional level as well as global and um, to also share those experiences um, we're inviting Abia to us to speak now and Abia since uh, your um, introduction was a little bit unclear maybe you can introduce yourself again so I'm unmuting you just right now okay thank you so much and thank you for giving me this opportunity and I'm really really happy to see like this is the first webinar we are conducting very excited at the same time um, because this is the real opportunity to learn and to contribute um, we women with disabilities that's in Seagale like uh, 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 have mentioned thanks to them for uh, sharing your thoughts on the Beijing and your personal experience and the contribution in the Beijing platform. So in this platform, the young women with disabilities and we who are struggling on the disability movement in our country level have a good chance to contribute and see what will be the possibility to work with closely with our local um, uh, organization, UN, international organization, and also with the government representatives. Because we have seen like um, uh, the Beijing uh, platform, of, like we have done so much on the disability network and we 
tried to connect with different organizations, but when we talk about the rights of women and girls with disabilities, it's normally excluded and people don't have very much like full understanding about it. So reading 20 plus review, it's a regional level. We have done some work. I will just briefly introduce about that. Asia Pacific held a three-day CSO forum prior to the intergovernmental meeting in November 2014. In 2014, we have organized some women with disabilities from Nepal, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, um, and they were from uh, uh, Maldives, and all these women, they came together to Asia Pacific and then we have um, trained them on the Beijing 20 plus review and also conducted a side event with the UN during the Asia Pacific forum on sustainable development. And also in the, uh, we talk about the concerns of women with disabilities there. Members of newly formed APWWDU attended like newly Abhi, are you still on? I think you lost your sound. Uh, are you still speaking? Yes. Can, can you hear me now? Sorry. Yes, I can hear you. Just a note, Abhiya, just uh, pause a little bit at the end of the sentence for our captionist, uh, Denise so that she can type. Thank you. Please keep going. And it was really successful because they came with their own personal experiences and they talk about the concerns of women with disability, how the government is working on the rights of women with disability or not. And then they compiled the overall statement. And in this statement, many of the country's representatives, they talk about that. They mentioned the world first time women with disability in the Beijing 20 plus review document in our standalone article. And APWLD wrote and submitted the only regional CSO submission that was when we met in the CSW in New York in 2015, we were like mentioned by the several state representatives that Asia Pacific is the only region who bring the concerns of women with disability in the Beijing platform. So which was a good uh, represent, like representation, response, and then government talked more about it, the, uh, the Tonga mission, the mission from uh, Fiji and also from um, Bangladesh and India, they have responded very well on the Beijing 20 plus review. But obviously that was the only thing, but we really need to continue that work. Like after the Beijing plus 25, what we want to see. So this year we have the preparation. The national reports were due on 1st May. The government still haven't submitted yet, many of the government. So still we have time on the country level to work closely with the government so we can give our inputs to them. And the regional reports are to be prepared by UN women meeting to take place in October or November. October till November. So these are the meetings that are happening uh, with the UN women in October and November. So uh, once the government reports will be submitted, then obviously the UN will work on the regional level to review those reports and see what are the gaps and the challenges. So still we have the opportunity to advocate for our rights. And the Asia Pacific CSOs, how they are working on the regional level, like CSOs forum being planned at and to regional meeting on 25th to 28th November. This meeting is specifically planned for the civil society organizations to contribute to bring their real situation, the challenges they are facing. Because mostly the government report says everything is fine. They have very good results and people are happy, but 
we know what are the still the gaps and the problems so this platform is really important and then APWLD is preparing a regional submission a survey for women with disability so we have developed a survey questionnaire maybe most of you have received that the survey uh, have mentioned like to get some information from your own experiences how do you see the gaps? Are you aware about the Beijing 20 plus review process? Or the country representatives are working closely with you or not? What kind of voice you have on the country level? So that survey is translated in Urdu. In, um, so we, um, and other languages as well. So we will share, if not, then we can share it also with you now so this survey is very important so we compile the results of the survey to report it back to the actual document and include our recommendations there so the deadline for the i just remind you the first may 2019 is a deadline for the national reviews and then when we move to the November 22nd to 24th, it's the Asia Pacific Regional CSO Forum for Beijing Class 25 review. And then 25th to 28th November is the Asia Pacific Regional Intergovernmental Meeting for Beijing Class 25 review. So in that, uh, the government representatives will be coming and they contribute on the regional participation for the CSW, the conference, uh, and that will be open. And then the final global review, it's in March 2020. The CSW, during the CSW in New York, this will the whole process. So we have time, like still July and um, May, everyone like. We'll start working on this. So we really need to see what are the possibilities, how we can engage our disability organizations in it, how we can actively contribute from our personal capacities and our organization's representations. We can talk with UN women at the country level. We can also talk with different international organizations. So develop some kind of like if they can assist us to work closely with the government. They, most of the countries have the women network in the countries that already existing. So we can get in touch with them and uh, talk to them how they are reviewing from the gender perspective. So all important to include uh, our uh, recommendations there. Um, how because most of the people have not that understanding like how uh, we work, this Beijing platform is more relevant to the concerns of women with disability. So they, we have like clear relationship with that in terms of women, women and health, violence against women, women and the economy, institutional mechanism for the advancement of women, human rights. Um, and then the girl child. So these are the areas which are clearly indicated in the Beijing Plus document. So we can take those recommendations and also the UN Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, which Miju is going to talk more about it. But we can create the linkages between these two and see how we can give the official language to the document, how we propose our rec um, recommendations to the state so they can incorporate it as like very importantly and they can like review that and also incorporate in the final recommendation from the country national level reviews. And then it comes back to the regional level and then same as the global, global level. So we have like uh, some of the recommendations, maybe you will see in the next slide. It's ensure that women with disabilities have access to information and services in the field of violence against women. So this is one of the key recommendations we can give to our government representatives and also 
ensure access to and develop special programs to enable women with disabilities to obtain and retain employment and ensure access to education and training at all proper levels in accordance with the standard rules um, on the equalization of opportunities for persons with disabilities, adjust working conditions uh, to the extent uh, possible in order to suit the needs of women with disabilities who should be assured legal protection against unfounded job those on account of their disabilities. So, and also in the last, um, this is more on the inclusiveness, how we see the women with disabilities as engaged in the whole main mainstream center. So here our role will be start, even if it's a men with disabilities or women with disabilities, since this platform is created by the APWLD for all of us. So this is very important how we see to contribute in the survey and after this webinar, we can conduct, you know, the survey results will be compiled. So we need you with your national representatives to comment the NGOs, the women organizations. And thirdly, continuing pushing this on the UN level. So the UN women, when they have the regional consent they can talk to women with disabilities and in 2020 it's in happening in the CSW so we will do the follow-up the recommendations the, uh, the suggestion and the final report which will be coming up so we will continue the process on the country on the regional and the global level Thank you so much, and I'm waiting for the questions. So in the end, if you have any questions, thank you. Thank you, Abia. Thank you so much for that overview. And um, thank you also for explaining our process uh, from APWLG to try and include um, the issues uh, of women with disabilities in our submissions uh, as we go about this Beijing review. I especially want to draw attention to the point about uh, the survey that we've prepared. We are going to circulate this survey after the webinar to everybody who has signed up. And uh, I think we can give about 10 days for responses because we really want to prepare a strong report um, to submit and to bring forward these issues. And uh, uh, just, to, uh, just to note that, as Abia said, we've translated in a couple of languages. We have also prepared an audio version for those who are visually challenged. And uh, we look forward to sharing that with you after this. And now I'm going to invite uh, our next panelist, uh, Miju, to speak a bit about um, the international uh, mechanisms and connections between not just women with disabilities rights but also how it also echoes some of the provisions of the Beijing platform and uh, as Midria said that she is currently one of the committee members of the uh, uh, for the committee on the rights of the persons with disabilities so we're really very glad to have her on and to, to speak on these issues uh, Miju, I'm unmuting you right now. It's all yours. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I would like to, uh, my uh, warm and love to Susan Siegel and Cindy Lewis, my Yuja, uh, as uh, the first uh, anim uh, graduate um, member of the uh, WILD. Um, I was um, participated in the Beijing um, 1995 with uh, uh, my uh, with uh, my user and other international uh, leaders uh, as a, a very young potential um, leader from South Korea just to uh, start women with disability movement and how I um, learn, how much I learn from them, uh, how to make uh, our struggle and to speak out and how to cooperate 
internationally uh, and to support each other. And through the, the first wild institute, uh, I learned too many uh, skills and um, um, knowledges and uh, especially loves of ourselves to, uh, to be an activist, to raise the women with this issue in uh, South Korea and also the national and international level. So I also very um, emotionally <laughs> moved in this time. When uh, I look back the um, Beijing 20, um, during the 25 years, when I uh, go back to the Beijing um, conference, um, this conference totally uh, changes my life, totally changes my life to uh, can devote um, women with disability rights. So thanks again to uh, be with um, Sudan Seagal and Cindy Lewis with us um, in this uh, moment. Um, especially, um, as a, actually, I'm a just a new member of the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So I don't know how much I can uh, share my knowledge and uh, experience about the uh, CLPD Committee activity, but uh, I will try to explain um, about uh, uh, CLPD and uh, uh, in, uh, CEDO, uh, how uh, what related our, uh, our rights. Now, um, international mechanism, uh, in the inc international mechanism, uh, women with disability as a member are two, as you know, the CLPD and uh, CEDO. Um, actually, uh, just uh, uh, one year ago, it was just one uh, woman uh, with disability member uh, in the uh, committee member. So it um, broke the agenda balance within the committee. So um, my um, memory uh, during the two years, um, uh, international uh, women with disability leaders all together can make our power to push the uh, UN uh, to uh, uh, UN, uh, especially the state, each state party uh, had to uh, nominate women with disability as a, a candidate uh, for uh, committee on the rights of persons with disabilities. And uh, finally, uh, six uh, uh, member of six women uh, with disability uh, was elected last year. Now uh, there are six uh, women with disability committee member uh, in our committee, and uh, we uh, had just a um, first uh, session um, last. Um, March to April, but uh, my experience uh, about our activity in the uh, committee was so strong. And these six uh, guys, women with disability, are very strong. And we always try to protect our women with disability issue for the, um, through the CLPD uh, convention and always uh, uh, strongly ask it to the state party who uh, are um, in the Geneva. Uh, we try to uh, express uh, how much women and girls with disability issue are important and um, not just the Article 6, but uh, gender perspective and the gender related article are spread to hold the um, CLPD, um, CLPD. So, uh, just uh, I would like to happily uh, share that uh, six women with disability mem members, uh, we uh, always uh, try to uh, uh, mention about each of the article, women and girl with disabilities uh, issues. And um, 
last year or so, it was a very historical moment that our colleague Anna from Spain was elected a member of the CEDO. Uh, it is the one of the historical uh, thing for us because uh, in these days the, in the international uh, human rights mechanism, uh, women uh, with this issue try to extend it to whole of the human treaty body. Um, so um, Anna elected as a uh, member of the CEDO is the one of those um, um, historical signal that women with disability now it is time to have to must involve the women's policy uh, all of the uh, state parties which have to uh, implementation of the CEDO uh, to their um, national level. Um, now uh, I would like to more um, explain about um, uh, what is the issue in the uh, international uh, human treaty bodies. Um, what does human rights law say about the rights of women and girls with disabilities? International human rights law clearly establishes the right of all human beings to non-discrimination and equality. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, UDHR, protects women and girls with disability against discrimination on account of their gender, as does the International uh, Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, ICCPR. The most important specialized international human rights treaty addressing the rights of women is the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CEDAW. Uh, while CEDAW does not specifically address the rights of women and girls with disabilities, so it affects all women and is uh, establishes an important framework and obligation related to the non-discrimination in the public and private sphere. Um, the CEDO committee, the body then monitor implementation of CEDO, issues a general comment calling on state to include the information on women and girls with disability in their report to the committee. Uh, and um, uh, in the um, CLPD adopt um, their uh, approach was a twin track is addressing the rights of women with disabilities. Um, this is the um, maybe I'm a, maybe a uh, characterized in terms of more general approach and more specific approach to um, especially. Um, in the general obligation to address gender discrimination, equality and non-discrimination from the uh, cornerstone upon which all human rights are constru const constructed. Um, uh, at its core, recognition of human rights means upsetting the notion that all human rights being equal words and I entitled to respect for uh, their human dignity. Um, so in the CLPD Article 3 General Principle, Section G provided that equality between men and women is a general principle underlying the entire treaty, CLPD. This statement means that even if a certain provision is silent on the issue of gender equality, the principle of equality still inform the application of a treaty provision. In this way, gender equality applies across the whole CLPD. So when I uh, give the question to the uh, state party uh, during the open dialogue in Geneva, I always stressed this uh, Article 3 uh, general um, principle, um, equality between men and women. So. Uh, uh, no, this is not the general comment number three. I mean, the, this is the CRPD Article 3. Uh, and we have also specific article uh, for women with disability as Article 6. 
Uh, this uh, Article 6 recognized the state to have the duty to address the multiple discrimination facing women with disabilities. It declared the state party shall take or appreciate the measure to ensure the full development, advancement, and empowerment of women for the purpose of guaranteeing them the exercise and enjoyment of um, women with disabilities of human rights. And uh, we also specific uh, obligation to address gender discrimination in CLPD. Um, we have uh, related uh, several uh, articles with women and girls with disability, uh, especially focused on the gender specific approaches uh, with respect to exploitation, violence, and abuse. In the um, article uh, 16, um, paragraph one, the CRPD reply to take all appreciate legislated administrative, social, education, and other measures, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and uh, in the pro private sector also, Article uh, 16, uh, second paragraph, CRPD uh, required the state to take appropriate measures to prevent all forms of exploitation, violence, and abuse by ensuring and to allow appropriate form of gender and age sensitive assistance and support for persons with disability and their family and caregivers, including through the provision of information and education on how to avoid recognizing and report to instances of exploitation, violence against violence and abuse. It is particularly focused on the private sector. And further addressing the state party duty to protect all the uh, people, Article 16, uh, 9 paragraph, uh, CRPD provided. I cannot read all of these uh, paragraphs, so if, uh, I would like to encourage you to um, find the CRPD um, uh, after uh, this meeting. And um, CRPD uh, strongly uh, asked uh, to the state party, they have a duty to uh, respect, uh, protect, and fulfill obligations related to the rights of women with disabilities. First, obligation to respect um, to women with disabilities um, rights. For example, state party may not restrict access to sexual and reproductive health care service for women with disabilities. Um, so they have to. Um, uh, keep the rights um, the retain uh, from uh, must retain retrain, refrain from engaging in any act, custom, or practice that create a barrier to enjoyment of the rights of women and girls with disabilities. And also, um, state party has the obligation to protect uh, and take uh, protect uh, to take uh, action. Uh, to ensure that non-state or private sector does not violate the right of women and girls with disabilities, and state and uh, they also have to take up a proactive step to ensure enjoyment of the rights of women with disabilities. Um, right, this there are many uh, uh, areas in the CLPD um, strongly. Um, uh, Ask that a state party to protect uh, women with disability rights as uh, their uh, obligation. A specific form of the gender discrimination and the inequality experienced by women and girls with disabilities situation. So um, we focus on the um, gender violence and access to the justice and access to the rehabilitation services, access to the essential health care and right to sexual and reproductive health care issue. And also, uh, we very much uh, have highly interest about the right to marry and form of family uh, because uh, some of the women with disability who live in Arab or under the uh, custom um, law, uh, they have a vulnerable uh, situation on uh, related the issue to marry and um, form have a family. 
Uh, and the, basically, the women with disabilities rights, uh, we uh, strongly stress to the education and uh, literacy ability um, is most uh, powerful on um, uh, uh, our uh, basic um, uh, way to uh, protect uh, women with disability. We uh, uh, protect ourselves rights by ourselves. So um, always uh, we consider the in the disability policies, especially uh, about the education, uh, we always uh, strongly uh, ask um, each government to have to um, equality boy and girl with disability uh, in the uh, education uh, system. Uh, also, main uh, very important uh, issue to be uh, independently live. As a person, women with disability must have to protect uh, and to have a strong support to uh, into the workplace without any discrimination. And um, basically, uh, um, state party must um, uh, pro um, uh, support the adequate standard of living of women with disability by their law. Uh, and to try to have, they have to uh, basic income and uh, disability insurance without any um, dis uh, discrimination and sufficiently. And I don't know, maybe uh, <laughs> in the future, um, we will have more, um, uh, we will have another um, opportunity to share deeply uh, look at the CRP, who of the CRPD, uh, it's a um, CRPD of article uh, with the uh, um, women with disabilities eyes and to uh, can uh, converse, to discuss our conversation um, later more, I hope. And, uh, to the uh, special, would you change the slides? Next slides. Uh, I would like to uh, mention about the special procedure reporting on a uh, person with disability. Uh, as you can see, the following UN special aperture report are relevant to the CLPD committee, uh, special aperture on disability of the Commission for Social Development, special aperture on the rise to education, special aperture on the rise of every one to the enjoyment of the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health. Special efforts on the uh, rights of persons with disabilities. And I want to, uh, one more added is that um, the Global Alliance of National Human Rights Institution, uh, they, with, uh, they have a disability committee within um, their um, organization. So um, women, uh, no, uh, I mean a uh, CLPD committee uh, strongly work with the um, uh, Global Alliance National Human Rights Institution Disability Working Group to uh, help um, national level human rights institution or commissions um, try to always to, um, strongly uh, monitoring the implementation of CLPD in national level and and um, work together with a committee to um, uh, have a raise a uh, person with disabilities issue uh, in the human rights mechanism uh, together. Especially, I was uh, elected as a focal point member of uh, CRPD committee to the uh, Global uh, Alliance National Human Rights Institution. So, um, I am um, Rosemary uh, from Australia, our co or focal point member. So we were uh, gave uh, the um, women with disability issue to the this uh, um, global alliance, the National Human Rights Institution Working Group on Disability. Um, so maybe um, next is um, spring, maybe. 
um, we will have a um, global um, symposium about women and girls with disability with um, committee and um, global um, alliance national human rights institution. So we will arrange women with disability through, through the um, uh, human rights institutions work. And I would like to um, more experience about the special reporter on the rights of persons with disabilities. My colleague, um, Devandas Agla, she is a very strong uh, uh, women with disability leader from our side. Uh, and in these days, Catalina Devandas Agla, she as a special reporter on the person with disability, uh, very strongly works through the whole the, um, human treaty body within in the UN. Uh, actually, um, I don't know, uh, I can well explain about her duty, but according to the, um, her um, website, I just briefly um, introduce um, her work to you. Um, her mandate of the special rapporteur is to um, develop a regular dialogue with states and other stakeholders for the identification, exchange, and promotion of good practice related um, to the realizing of the rights of persons with disabilities. And receive and experience information and communication on bi violation of the rights of persons with disabilities. And she also consulted with uh, and involve the person with disability in their representative organization and to share um, the um, human rights situation of a uh, person with disability in the world. And make, she make a concrete uh, recommendation on to how to better promote and protect the rights of persons with disabilities, uh, blah, blah, blah. It is uh, her um, work um, mandate. Um, Maybe uh, in next uh, opportunity, next time, uh, we needed to invite her to uh, this kind of our, our online workshop to share her work and to um, and uh, share, give the opportunity to share how she was uh, strongly worked for the women with disabilities rights as a, a special reporter. So, um, I would like to move to the next slides. Uh, it is the uh, next session in the um, CRPD committee um, um, uh, is praying. Uh, actually, uh, as a, just to a uh, new member, <laughs> I received just the um, uh, state parties uh, report and uh, some of the NGO federal uh, report to, uh, from our secretary office in Geneva about these uh, countries. Um, uh, even though I had just one time uh, experience uh, participating in section, but uh, my strong uh, question and um, doubt it was that um, when we had an open dialogue with each state party uh, was scheduled in, uh, the, um, uh, the spring uh, session in this year, there were no women with disabilities representatives who can um, Speak out themselves to the directly women and directly to the committee. Some of some of the country DPO group, the men with disability leader always uh, try to um, um, representative um, for women with disability, um, and uh, they. they um, didn't uh, well understanding women with disability leaders must uh, to be a Geneva um, when their uh, state party uh, had open dialogue with committee uh, they 
need to speak our to their uh, rights directly to the committee. But unfortunately, uh, two or three country without a uh, three or three country, um, I couldn't uh, meet uh, women with disability leaders from all of the state parties during the session. So um, I think um, we always gather into the uh, con convention on the state parties um, conference in, in the New York, but actually who try to change their country, uh, women with disability leaders must uh, come to the Geneva and to speak out and to provide the real information about their situation to the committee. But unfortunately, um, um, I think um, not enough uh, financial support and even some of country women with disability leaders were, um, I mean, um, they uh, didn't have any um, experience training how to monitoring and how to provide their um, rights situation as a, a report, parallel report, I mean, and to um, how to uh, network with uh, internationally to support their voice to into the uh, federal uh, report like this. So um, as a member of the committee member, my personal um, thinking is that we also to uh, have uh, national level and uh, rural level or more difficulty uh, area when we disturbed and bring their boys to do Geneva. And um, so that is what I want to share this. And I would like to go next to slides. And uh, you know, my um, experience is through uh, out the last two, uh, 10 years, I mean the one decade, when I read the whole of the uh, state parties uh, uh, report during the uh, one decade, uh, some of the country never uh, answer or gave the, uh, uh, their um, response or resource or um, policy about uh, Article 6 and related to women with this article in the Article 3. So CRPD general uh, comment number three about article uh, six is a um, very essential, important to, uh, document to the state parties. Uh, they can how to uh, implementation, um, women with uh, implementation of what CRPD say about uh, uh, women with disabilities rise and how they can protect uh, and uh, support. Uh, but um, what is the uh, real serious thing is that um, this general comment to uh, not uh, usually uh, translated uh, their own language for, to the each state parties. So not easy to the uh, women with disabilities can approach that general um, comment number three uh, to have their, uh, enhance their um, voice through the uh, CRPD. I don't know in this slides, um, the section B or section B, um, it, it is, uh, um, uh, so not, I cannot explain well about this uh, section B or section V, but I would like to uh, share um, with you in this time about the, uh, 
general uh, joint statement by the Committee on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the Committee on the Elimination of Forms of Discrimination Against Women. Uh, this joint statement was published uh, 29 August 2018. Uh, this, tight, the, this joint statement title is Guaranteeing Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights for All Women, in particular Women with Disabilities. So in these days, uh, CRPD and CEDO, these two committee uh, have a joint committee meeting also. So um, um, uh, start from this kind of joint statement, but we also work together and try to uh, regularly meeting with between two um, committees. So. Uh, some of the women's member on CLPD was uh, elected as a, a joint committee member to the CEDO. So uh, maybe um, between two committee activity will be more strong, uh, uh, will be more strong. So anybody um, who uh, try to send your message to uh, this joint committee. It will be very welcome and helpful to uh, listen your voice uh, to be uh, input uh, women with disability issued uh, to the CEDO and also to the uh, CRPD together. And related uh, reproductive health and rights and sexual um, rights, it is a crucially uh, most important issue between women and women with disability and women without disabilities. So um, this issue will be continuously um, hot for um, to these two committee. Uh, so I will share this a joint statement by document file. I will send to the uh, moderator of this uh, workshop. So uh, love to share with you. I don't know, I had a good um, presentation for you. Um, just to please understand, I'm just a begin, beginner of the CFPD committee member. So maybe next time I can more uh, good more um, well uh, share my uh, expertise exper professional experience with you and means to provide uh, a good uh, new um, resource or any um, document or any comment what you want. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you so much. Too long. I'm so sorry. No, no, not at all. Not at all. I think uh, when we were planning this, we did say that if you want to give more detail, please do, because uh, I think lots of people who are joining appreciate knowing more about these processes from you directly, as a member, even if you're new. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. I'm muting you now, Miju, and I just wanted to say that there are a couple of questions that people have used the Q&A option. Um, whichever one is easier for you, either the chat or the Q&A option, please feel free to put in your questions if you have questions for Susan or Abia or Miju. I would now like to invite uh, one person to give a bit of a response as well as share her overview of her own experiences. And I'm very pleased to introduce Nidhi Goya, who is a disability rights and gender justice activist. She is president of the board of uh, AWID. She is also on the global CSO advisory group for UN Women. And she has her own NGO in India, which is called Rising Flame. If I got anything wrong, Nidhi, please feel free to uh, correct me. And um, I think you should be on. Uh, please uh, share your thoughts and reflections on some of the points that have been raised and anything else. Uh, all yours. Hi, am I audible, Sanam? 
You're very clear. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the introduction and a big thanks for inviting me here. Um, it's indeed a pleasure and a little, I mean, challenging to speak after Susan, Abia, and Miju. Um, I've been working for Rights of Women and Girls with Disabilities for really a, nearly a decade now. So I just wanted to summarize some of the key points. It's really difficult, as I'm saying, to summarize what the three of them have said in their such rich experience of so many years. Um, but some of the points that stood out and, and just illustrating um, some more barriers, challenges, and opportunities through some examples in um, and trying to keep it brief at the same time will be an effort that I make. Um, just to um, say the three, the, from the three previous speakers, the three uh, strong points that come out um, are women with disabilities and leadership. Um, so really their voices being heard and all of us have been talking about um, amplifying voices of women with disabilities for many, many years and having them in leadership roles um, and so that they are in charge of their lives, they are being heard, et cetera. So I think that was something that was really highlighted um, and that cuts across um, the Beijing platform, cuts across the UNCRPD mechanism, of course, is the main theme of the Wild Institute that was mentioned. Um, the second piece was around inclusion, and I will mention more. Um, I think Abia brought this more up around um, inclusion in the women's movement, but also what inclusion meant, et cetera. What were the barriers to it? And cross-movement collaboration was another cross-cutting theme. So just responding to some of these um, in the next five minutes or so, because I'm very conscious that we will be coming to the end of the uh, webinar time. Um, just to start with one example um, of a country from Asia, because we are focusing on the region right now. Um, I was training the women with disabilities and working with them um, to get um, the CRPD reporting, the shadow reporting, which Miju has very kindly explained to us in detail. We were trying to get the networks and putting women, getting women with disabilities together, providing the technical um, support and training needed to file the shadow report and to take some of that, have a, take a lead in that advocacy. Um, there were, um, you know, just bringing women with disabilities together was difficult um, if we had to think about the intersections within women with disabilities, right? It's not like we're a homogenous group. Uh, so thinking about women across disabilities, thinking about the rural urban divide, thinking about indigenous women with disabilities, et cetera, et cetera. So a small group was brought together considering all of this, all of these points with the help of the local and national activists in that particular country. Um, one of the women uh, network was instituted by the National Disability Network. Um, and uh, they were on paper two separate networks. And so the Women Network, Women with Disability Network participated and was very enthusiastic till the second or the third day of the technical support and training meeting um, when the question was, how does the report and the data move forward in the pipeline? Uh, where the gathered women and us as external support refused to put it through the national persons with disability pipeline. And there was a huge, huge divide and there was an uproar uh, where the women network instituted by the mainstream national disability network refused to work any forward. And the main complaint or the, or the stress was that if we go against the national network and, and not taking their permission was seen as going against the national network, um, not allow them to gatekeep, then our access to resources, our access to funding, our access to opportunities and disability spaces would cease. Um, I'm just trying to bring in this context is because we're talking about Beijing Plus 25 and to really review what has changed for women with disabilities. It is very important for us to think of a couple of things, um, the patriarchy within the disability movement um, and the alienation from the other movements. And I am using strong words here because in many contexts, in many forms, in many ways, we are still alienated from other movements on the basis of cost, on the basis of infrastructure, on the basis of lack of knowledge, ignorance, um, accessibility being too expensive, et cetera. 
Um, so just a couple of things to think about in when we're talking about intermovement work um, and we say that women with disabilities in the Beijing Plus 25 have one of the key themes that Abhya uh, outlined for us here was violence against women. Um, and so um, a couple of things that women with disabilities in the current cultural context uh, in Asia Pacific, um, or even globally in different nationals and re national and regional and cultural contexts, um, patriarchy sort of overlays and women with disabilities go down the ladder um, in, many, um, in many situations. Um, falling below men with disabilities, falling below uh, women without disabilities, et cetera. Uh, so voices being heard, uh, we, some of the leaders present on the call, um, the work and the struggles have been to start work really or start raising, building, collecting, building capacities, collecting voices right from the grassroots and creating that kind of access, which is a multiple multi-layered access and not just disability access. So when we think about access to women with disabilities, we have to think about um, the patriarchy. So having you know, access to women themselves, thinking about disability and environmental barriers. So thinking about that access and then thinking about sort of the various other indigenous, rural, cultural, et cetera, accesses in place, which sound a lot, but which are really not that difficult if we for once set things in motion. Having said that, uh, strong collaboration with the women's rights movement has always been helpful. Uh, but when we look at the women's rights movement and we say uh, these are the three or four areas where we have an opportunity, of course, even beyond in the Beijing Plus 25, but when we say women's health, um, then the question for women with disabilities, um, and I'm particularly raising some of these, is because we have the opportunity to gather information, put it forward, do some advocacy, again, as outlined in the timeline and the international processes, um, is when we think about women's health, are we then collaborating enough with the health movement? Um, within the health movement, are we talking about sexual and reproductive health, uh, challenging some of the stigma around sexuality and sexual health and anything to do with sexual and reproductive health in many cultural and country contexts that we are all from. Um, so collaborating with various movements, even within women's rights, so not bucketing it as one women's rights movement, but then the health rights movements and maybe the women working within the health rights movements or the feminists, to be precise, working within the health rights movements. Um, then talking about violence, and then looking at a holistic landscape of violence against women um, and then talking to actors um, again within the women's rights movement, talking to funders, funding some of the violence against movement work and participating in more spaces and conferences. So advocating, um, for example, in national policies, in regional plans, etc., around um, violence against women. So um, when we talk about girls with disabilities, are we then even taking a step forward to engage with the CRC and thinking about girls with disabilities from that angle? Or would we have to, with the kind of torture, uh, institutionalizations, forced sterilization, forced hysterectomy being some of the key violence and um, sexuality and health issues, are we then uh, looking at collaborating with more human rights entities. And we know that um, all the movements that I've outlined have been very slow on their uptake. So it's sort of a collaborative effort. I do not think that all the onus can be only on women with disabilities while we take the lead. It also has to be a movement building perspective. So really finding allies who could then carry our voice forward. Um, to give a simple example of a global campaign around hashtag me too um which was a sexual harassment at workplace violence against women um a very mainstream global campaign uh, albeit online um our push or engagement uh, barring a few women with disabilities has been very very limited with the global campaign and vice versa so the campaigners the women's rights movement have uh, not recognized this gap to put forward, and again, it's most, I cannot 
give a blanket statement of all because that's not that wouldn't be true. So really filling such gaps, um, thinking about access and inclusion, and one of the bigger challenges that we've seen, which is a shifting landscape for women with disabilities, is when we say inclusion. It's really um, to use a politically incorrect word, flirting with the line of inclusion and tokenism. And I think um, having women with disabilities do one very important to hear their issues from their voices. So carrying forward the, uh, the statement and the, the mantra of the disability rights movement of nothing about us without us somehow somewhere gets lost within for women and girls with disabilities within the disability rights movements as well and i do recognize when niju says that many um many many countries there weren't women with disabilities reporting on the issues at all because nothing about us without us unfortunately doesn't apply in many country contexts and regional contexts to women with disabilities when it comes to the disability rights movement itself but also when we talk about inclusion in many spaces, uh, women and girls with disabilities end up being the token voice of, um, so for example, uh, we have a joke about with other uh, disabled women or even uh, caste discrimination and religious discriminated women or indigenous women saying, we are the marginalized voices panel. Um, and what that means and how inclusive or damaging could that approach be? Um, the excuse often is that at least there is an inclusion. And I think it is time with Beijing Plus 25 for women with disabilities to move beyond the at least um, and gain leadership and power in the real sense of the world, uh, in the sense of the word. Mm, I have a lot to add, but I just want to end with one thought and there's research available on this is what we need to advocate for is um, many a times the, uh, the, the, the sorry uh, reasoning is that it's really expensive to think about disability inclusion in women's meetings we know that resources for women's rights have been really limited um, and mapping has been done around that by AVID, by Women's Foundation, many such more people, but really AVID taking the lead. Uh, we understand that when there is limited resources and funding isn't enough, including women with disabilities is always a question on the grounds of cost. And there are studies out there that say that cost of exclusion is way higher than any cost of inclusion that you may incur. Um, even if you go beyond the human rights of being the human rights violation, if you exclude voices, um, the right to be included, the right to be not discriminated, the Article 3 that Misha was talking about. Um, um, I think keeping some of this in mind would be really helpful. Um, I think natural allies of women with disabilities are not just the disability movement. It is really various actors and various intersections within the women's movement, not just, again, the women's movement as a whole. And I think recognizing that is extremely important. So when we talk about women's economic rights, are we talking about women with disabilities? When we're talking about women's health, are we talking about women with disabilities? Um, are, when we talk about inclusion of indigenous women, are we talking about women with disabilities, just to give a couple of examples, um, and access to justice, women's human rights defenders, the list is endless. Um, so I would like to just end with this thought that inclusion, if we slowly sort of move to a landscape where collaborations and intermovement work is a natural way of working and intersectionality is not just a word that we use, um, and that inclusion doesn't remain an option anymore. Um, I think we will, Beijing Plus 25 has seen uh, significant, smaller, larger, significant changes, but we have a long journey to go in shifting mindsets, in changing contexts, and if inclusion doesn't remain a choice, but it becomes, it becomes a way of our work and our being in societies, we will make more significant process uh, going forward, changes going forward. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nidhi, for such a rich response. And I will just comment that 
there's if, if we want to strengthen these uh, sort of cross movement moments and really make change possible there's no reason to be polite we should be honest about our flaws and where we need to change so really appreciate all of uh, all of the rich uh, sort of analysis and uh, perspective that you have shared so I'm now going to pass on to Marion, my colleague, to just uh, summarize a little bit on some of the questions we've received. And you can keep adding questions in the chat or request to speak. Uh, we're, we're happy to include either of that. Okay, I think we're addressing about three questions. Um, two are coming in from the uh, Q&A box that we have and another in the chat box. So first is, uh, first was a question from Tika, I think, who had a very, very compact question. Um, broadly, I think, to all of the panelists and particularly to Miju. So maybe I'm going to um, read the one that's specific to Miju. So she was asking Miju for the specific role that the UNC CRPD committee plays in maybe monitoring the Beijing platform for action, um, both the uh, implementation as well as the review process was a question to Miju. Another question to Miju uh, was coming from our colleague Aditi um, asking, what are the major issues that hinders the access of women with disabilities to reach out to government? In what areas should the civil society and human rights organizations be proactive in addressing uh, and advocating the concerns of women with disabilities? Was a uh, direct question to Miju. And then for everybody, for everybody else, um, I think there's uh, there's a general question, maybe I think not just the panelists, but maybe all that's in the call, is a question of, of mobilizing more women with more women with disabilities in the Beijing Plus Twenty Five Review Conference and discussion, um, more if, and uh, be more effective in pushing for WWD issues and agenda. Um, second point was also how to advocate at the country level. Uh, whether via national consortiums that uh, go into the BPFA review, as well as civil society um, consultations. The other question that came from the chat box is, I think, addressed to us as APWLD. So I guess uh, I'll read it out and maybe also attempt to uh, attempt to respond. Uh, I'm sure colleagues can um, also chip in. Okay, so. Um, how can APWLD incorporate or help Nepalese women participate in advocating the status of how either CEDO or the UNCRPD has been implemented in the region? Yeah. And then, yeah, I think that's it. The rest were comments, and we're happy to we're happy to see in the questions as well as in the chat boxes that you are happy with how the discussion is going on. So maybe let's pass. Um, may I we pass on to Miju as well to respond to the two questions? Thank you, Marianne. Yes, my uh, dear friend Tika, <laughs> you had the most, one of them. Um, Powerful women with disability leader in APW United in our uh, network. Um, you already had, I believe, you had already had the uh, experience of how to bring the uh, women with disability boys uh, from the national level to the um, committee in the Geneva. Um, first, my uh, thing is that um, we needed to uh, have, uh, we ha we need uh, education or training program about the uh, um, gender and women with disability issue within in the CRPD uh, in national level. And um, through this kind of uh, training program, we can um, catch up the women and girls with disability these boys uh, from themselves to, to um, related uh, CLPD uh, each uh, articles and then they can um, uh, realize the, between the state party report and real situation of uh, women and girls with disability themselves 
uh, uh, in uh, their country. And then uh, they can make a um, uh, pro make a, a parallel report about their country. And then after that, it is not easy to uh, bring to the Geneva without any financial and uh, other uh, support. Um, I know that about this situation. So uh, we needed to gathering our um, pow um, power or idea, uh, how to bring uh, women with disabilities um, leaders can uh, participate in the, uh, to the committee uh, when their uh, countries was open dial dialogue. Um, Actually, personally, I don't know uh, about how can make money for support uh, these uh, sisters uh, can be uh, freely uh, in the Geneva. But I believe that now uh, uh, it is time to we have to uh, gathering our uh, idea how can slow this uh, situation uh, together. And my one of the thinking about that, um, who had already have experience uh, about to uh, make a report, parallel report about women with disability issue to the uh, 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 committee, uh, needed to share uh, their experience to uh, another uh, countries, sisters with disabilities, uh, and to support them, how can uh, they uh, formulate their issue uh, uh, throughout the uh, CRPD. Um, let's uh, uh, talk or um, discuss about issue uh, uh, together, further, actually. <laughs> I don't know if not now how to, um, give a good uh, feedback answer to Tika, but I believe Tika also let you know how can slow uh, this problem together. And Marianne, I forgot the second question. Would you tell me again? Hello? Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So the other question, uh, the other question to you, but I think you somehow responded to it already because the other question was the major issues that hinders the access of women with disabilities to reach out to their governments. In what yes. should civil society and human rights organizations be proactive in addressing the and advocating the concerns of women with disabilities? Yes. Yes, can you respond to that? Yeah. So my uh, initial uh, very, my uh, answer is almost the uh, same with the Tika to for the Tika, and according to the uh, question uh, from the ADP, uh, she gave the question to the uh, Miss Catalina de Bandas Aguilar. So no, no. Uh, no. I can give the uh, email address or some information about her. Um, um, you? Sorry, yeah. just explain a little bit. Aditi is beside me right now. She actually meant yeah. it to you. Yeah, yeah I'm finished. It. Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry. And, yeah. All right. Thank you, Miju. Maybe we can also hear from Abia on her thoughts on the other questions particularly on mobilizing more women with disabilities into the different reviews and possibly um, access access on um, country level part part participations. Oh. Abia seems to be offline. I wonder if she's still on somewhere. No? Okay. Well, um, maybe, maybe we Susan? Can yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so um, since since Abia just dropped off, um, I wonder, Susan, uh, uh, some of the questions that came up were a little general, but if you also have any reflections since you were the first speaker, 
Uh, you can also share those. Can I pass to you? And I'm unmuting you right now. Okay, uh, thank you. Yeah, this is Susan. Um, well, thank you for all the information. I think one of the things that I think is important is that we really look at budgets. So when people say, one of the things that happened in Beijing 25 years ago is this whole idea of somehow disabled women have come after non-disabled women, or we don't, the points that I think is really important, that when people talk about inclusion, we, say, we ask very specifically, can you show us your budgets to show that you're including reasonable accommodation in all your budgets? So there will always be money to make sure that your venues are accessible, that they're sign language interpreters. Because until people put reasonable accommodation in every single budget, that has to do with literacy, with health, with pre violence prevention, with all the issues that are so important. If you don't have reasonable accommodation in your budget, disabled women are gonna be left out. And the second thing is as we move uh, forward to Beijing 25, is um, as the other speaker said, that we need to be sure that women with disabilities are on all the plenaries and not just talking about disability, but are talking about health and violence prevention. So one of the terms that we use a lot is moving from gen to infiltration. And for us, that's just a way of saying that all these programs that are for women or all these programs that are being um, policies must be included. And inclusion, I think, has been taken too long. And so we have actually are telling grassroots disabled women to literally show up to the programs, to not wait for an invitation, and to really change the, the whole paradigm of, of inclusion, that this is not something we're waiting for, but um, is very active, and that and, and other movements need to take the time to infiltrate the disabled women's movement by finding the disabled women leaders and asking them how for advice. And again, all that talk will only really have teeth if there's reasonable accommodation budget line items to show that you're really planning for active inclusion or infiltration. So with that, I will pass it back to you all. Thank you so much, Susan, for those reflections. And you're absolutely right. We all need to make more of an effort on just some of the basics of at least displaying that we're putting our money towards this, uh, this issue of inclusivity and it's not just an idea. I'm gonna to pass to my colleague, Marion, to answer one of the questions that was specifically addressed to us at APWLD. Yeah, so um, uh, let me read back. Sorry. Okay. Let me read back, but I think there was a question to us on how we are actually helping, how we are actually helping uh, mobile, uh, uh, open up spaces, I think, at the, uh, at the national level. And I think the country, the, it was a, a country specific, a country specific question. So I think with the work of APWLD, given the membership that we also have with, uh, in Nepal itself, and the number, the growing number of members and partners we have that work on women with disabilities. I think the, the platforms that we uh, that we provide or that we are able to facilitate for, uh, for them actually cuts across not just the Beijing platform for action, not just the Beijing platform for action review, but other other regional as well as international platforms. So in the past, when it was relevant, especially to women with disabilities. We have mobilized um, and specifically included women with disabilities back when we were organizing the um, CSW uh, delegation in 2013 that specifically talked about eliminating violence against women. So that was also when, and I'm sure, um, I'm sure Tika and Miju will remember this um, because they were part of that they were part of that delegation. So just to reiterate that our support uh, for inclusion 
and ensuring that voices of women with disabilities are included cuts across, not just on the Beijing, but the CSW, uh, and also even the Asia Pacific Forum on uh, Sustainable Development. Yeah, where um, APWWDU members have also, um, when possible, have uh, have also been have also been present, and have held positions like being the co-conveners, for example, of uh, the constituency on persons with disabilities. Abia, Abia was a, a focal point for a number of for a number of years. So I hope that uh, I hope that somehow um, answers. What we can, and um, just to just to backtrack a little on the process that uh, on the process that Sanam's program did um, prior to this webinar was actually to um, give a small amount of grants um, so that national level consultations um, could also happen in the different countries. And do we have one for Nepal, Sanam? We do. Yes. Yeah. So we are, and I think it's uh, it. Of all of the countries, I think Nepal was the one that was very inclusive as well of human, women human rights defenders plus women with disabilities. And even indigenous women indigenous with disabilities women. as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I hope that captures what uh, APWLD does. Thank you, Marion. Um, I, I were coming close to two hours and you all of you have been very patient. Really, really appreciate that. So what I'm going to do is invite our speakers to do a last round of comments. And I would like to start with Nidhi, please. I'm just unmuting you now. The floor is yours. Hi. Um, thank you so much. And thank you, everyone, for your questions. Um, just actually missed a point um, and one I'd like to take this opportunity to add here. So one is about data and I, um, we're all really looking forward to the survey forms um, that APWLD will send us. But even in the national context, and I think Tika was uh, asking that question around uh, national implementation. And I think really having the push for data and inclusion uh, or having disaggregated data would be really important. Um, across sectors, across regions, across contexts, etc., to talk about because to remove the invisibilization of women with disabilities in many forms. Um, so data is really important, which I wanted to mention before and has got lost. The the last comment which I would like to close with is to um, think about um, all the things that have been done and move forward with the positivity that we've gathered and the positive momentum. So to tap into the various opportunities and one of them, which I see clearly, uh, particularly if your country is in review, for example, India uh, will be up for review in the CRPD uh, in September, but um, to tap into various human rights mechanisms and when your country is up for review, uh, to collaborate with the allies at that point and particularly in the CRPD committee, uh, Miju is here and she can correct me, uh, but to collaborate and to reach out to um, the empathetic, the women with disabilities, the empathetic members who are there, who are present, who are there to support and understand the context and the difficulties with which women with disabilities gather and come together. And to end with the thought of um, having more funding opportunities, having a platform to share resource commitments would be extremely important. Susan has um, uh, emphasized on that and Miju has said it again, uh, that reaching Geneva is important. One of the key barriers is funding. So leaving with data, allies and funding is my three uh, moving forward points and looking ahead um, kind of a spectrum. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nidhi, for those uh, uh, final comments. I am going to go backwards and uh, uh, perhaps Miju, if you would like to say some last words before we wrap up. I'm unmuting yeah. myself. Yeah, uh, thank you uh, all of who are here uh, and uh, share your um, idea and, uh, and give the uh, question and comment. Um, I missed one uh, point also that um, we are 
six women uh, member in CRPD, we uh, made a women's caucus group within the CRPD committee. So um, we always opened our um, mind to support uh, women uh, with disability, my colleague from all around. So if if um, I would like to share uh, contact information uh, with you, so uh, if there is any um, uh, opinion or try to uh, share your um, any uh, information or uh, suggest or uh, resource uh, to uh, have a good dialogue with uh, your country. Uh, we will try to uh, representative and bring your voice as a committee member to the your state party. So uh, please, even we face this still very uh, many struggle and difficulties um, financially or um, the uh, more other difficulties. But uh, at the but we often so open to you. So send uh, directly to a women's committee member. Uh, you were a uh, boys. Uh, let's just start from this uh, point. It is what I want to share. Um, last comment. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Miju. And I think everybody appreciates that uh, you're really uh, welcoming and asking for these comments and inputs. Um, I hope. Uh, 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 everyone agrees on that point and uh, as I said we're wrapping up and uh, I'll just ask I, I can't see Abia on I'm very sorry that uh, we are missing her uh, additional comments and responses uh, however we'll jump on I think uh, to Susan if you have any last comments or reflections uh, before we wrap up Susan I am unmuting you now the floor is yours that's great. Well, thank you so much. I guess I'll go back to where I started and say that it's 25 years later and how wonderful it is that um, organizations like yourselves, who um, organizations that are not necessarily dis disabled women run, are reaching out and including women with disabilities. And thanks to our folks at AWID who put on such a fabulous uh, conference a few years ago in Brazil. And really want to, I know Abia is not on the call, but a real big hug to Miju um, for all the fabulous work that you're doing. And I would just want to say that looking back 25 years, hopefully we have all made a difference just by all the amazing women who are on this webinar, who I'm sure every day are working very tirelessly on behalf of disabled women girls. And I think if we as disabled women leaders really stick together and support each other and work as one strong unit with our sisters and allies in the, um, from other movements as well who are with us, for us it's tonight, um, I'm very encouraged um, that we will be able to bring justice and equality to the literally millions of disabled women and girls globally. So I will go to sleep tonight very encouraged and just wanna thank um, everyone who has been on this webinar. Um, what a privilege it is to be part of it. So thank you, back to you. Thank you, Susan, for such kind words. And uh, I, if, I'm sorry we didn't say it before, really appreciate you staying up at the evening in your time zone uh, while most of us in Asia are in morning or afternoon timing. And thanks to others in different time zones as well. So uh, we are wrapping up. I would like to give a few th specific thanks to our panelists as, as well as our participants. I know that you are all in different countries. You, you, are, you all have different levels of connectivity as well as different challenges. Um, so thank you very much for making the effort. I want to warn you that you are all going to get many emails from us. Uh, first of all, tomorrow you're going to get an email that has the evaluation form for this webinar. 
it will ask you just your comments on the webinar, its accessibility level, and that will also help us because this is the first uh, such webinar that uh, APWLD has done. So if you give us feedback on that form, that will also help us improve for the next one that we do. So that's one. And another email is gonna come to you with the survey that we've been talking about. And uh, if, we, if you complete the survey, you will get more emails with follow-up questions, as well as uh, maybe uh, an initial draft of our report, and so on and so forth. We will also, as, as there is a lot of interest uh, already in how to participate in the meetings that are coming up, that Abia kindly outlined in the, time in the timeline that we uh, also pulled up a little earlier as well. We will also make sure that when the call for applications, the call for workshops, all of these are circulated, we'll make sure that this is shared with you as well. Um, not just from APWLD, we'll also push um, UN Women Regional Office for Asia and Pacific to try and share that information so that it goes out as widely as possible. So look out for a lot of uh, messages from us. Please be patient with us. And uh, we also understand if you don't have time to reply to everything, but we appreciate everything that you share with us. And I hope uh, to see your responses to the survey. We all hope to see you present in the regional meeting in November uh, and uh, maybe also at uh, the CSW next year in March in New York as well. But of course, it's not limited to these spaces. We were talking about sort of having these connections across different movements, across different regions and spaces. I hope we continue the conversation going forward. So I see that in the comment box, um, we're mostly getting lots of thank yous and, and uh, comments on really the excellent, excellent presentations uh, that we got. So I think it's a good place to wrap up. Thank you so much for so many of you who've stuck around for over two hours. Unless my colleagues have any final comments, we're gonna stop it here. And uh, as we mentioned, we, we shared this stream live. We also are going to share the recording of this webinar for those who were not able to join or if you missed some part at the beginning or at the end. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Have a good night. And uh, let's hope we keep communicating. Bye-bye.